We are doing quadratic vocabulary today, talking about things like maximum and minimum, when the graph is increasing and decreasing, where the graph is greater than zero and less than zero, just kind of general ideas about the graph and the function, okay? So we talked a little bit as we were graphing as what the minimum or maximum was. So let's look at example one here. Does this graph have a maximum or a minimum? It has a maximum because the highest point, right? And what is the y value of that highest point? Four. Four. So this graph has a max of four. It's the y value, the maximum. How about example two? Good. A minimum of negative one. Okay. Now, look down below. There's three graphs. Okay. A, B, and C. Write down their minimum or maximum. Okay. Take a second. Write down the minimum or the maximum. What did we get? What is our min or max on number uh, letter A? Minimum of two. You need to say whether it's a min or a max, right? Yes. And B? And letter C? All right, so that's easy enough, right? Yes. Okay, next. Where is the graph increasing and decreasing? Okay, so think about the parabola. We, if we follow the parabola from left to right the way we read a graph and the way we read a book, if I follow this parabola, what is it doing first? Is it increasing or decreasing? Okay. And then what happens when something is thrown in the air at the very top? It kind of pauses for a second, right? And then it, it, it stops and then it falls, right? So it's increasing, it stops, and then it's decreasing. Agreed? Okay, what about example two? It's decreasing. decreasing, and then it stops, and then it's increasing. Okay, so we describe this as to what x values for which the graph is increasing or decreasing. So our x values are divided up by the axis of symmetry. Okay. Well, the graph does both, right? The graph increases and then decreases if it's a maximum. It decreases and then increases if it's a minimum. Right? If you were to, if this was a roller coaster, think about this roller coaster. You're going to go up, 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 and you pause for that short second, and then you go down, right? So, and then, and then you go down, 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 and then you Start going back up, right? And the next loop. Think of that as a roller coaster. Up and down. Down and up. Okay, decreasing, increasing, increasing, decreasing. So we can say that to the left, aren't these values to the left of x equals, that's not two, negative one. Aren't these values here to the left of x equals negative 1? And these values are to the right of x equals negative 1? Okay. So this, draw some arrows on there to show it. These are to the right of x equals negative 1. Now, what is the graph doing to the left of negative 1? Is it increasing or decreasing? Increasing. It's increasing. We'll just abbreviate INC. Come on. And what is it doing to the right? It's decreasing. You read a graph from left to right the way you read a book. 
right? There's got to be a starting point, and then it follows the path of the function. It's like a roller coaster. The left side is the starting point. What? Well, that's different languages. We are still reading our books from left to right. Okay. So let's look at example two. This graph we said is decreasing. If I put a little roller coaster car at the top, it's going to go down, right, until it reaches the minimum. And then it's going to start increasing. So these points are to the left of x equals 1, right? These points are to the right of x equals 1, right? Everybody agree? These points are on the left and these points are on the right. And we said over here the graph is doing what? Decreasing. And these points over here are? Increasing. Now, could I also write to the left of x equals 1 as an inequality? Yeah. Can I write to the left of x equals negative 1 as an inequality? Well, we would do y yeah. is less than or equal to 1. X is less than or equal to negative 1. Oh, I thought you were talking about the second. And this one is x is less than or equal to 1, and it's actually not equal to? It's not equal to because at that minimum or maximum, it's not moving. Okay, Because if I throw something in the air, everybody watch. So we're looking at this one to the left of 2, because 2 is my vertex, right? Is it increasing or decreasing? To the right of 2, is it increasing or decreasing? Right, so here we are increasing and to the left it's decreasing we want to draw the arrows if we want what's my inequality for the decreasing to the left of two right x less than two and my inequality for increasing to the right of 2? X greater than 2. So I want you to be familiar with both notation, whether we say in the multiple choice answers it's increasing to the right of 2, or we say it's increasing when X is greater than 2. Same thing, right? That's saying the same thing. We could do either way. Okay, you want to try B? Okay, so for B, my axis of symmetry we're going to say is at negative one half. It's not exact, but that's close enough. On the left of negative one half, what is it doing? Increasing. It's increasing. And to the right of negative one half, the graph is decreasing. And so that's x is greater than negative one half, and x is less than negative one half. Okay. Questions? Okay, so I'm going to skip C because I did run out of time in the last class. And I went too fast on the backside for them. The next thing we're going to look at is where f of x equals 0 is less than 0 and is greater than 0. What are all these things asking? f of x is the y values, right? Where are the y values equal to 0? Look at example 1. X yes, your x-intercepts. Okay, so when it asks this, it's asking for x-intercepts. In this case, it's what? Zero. Negative 2 and? negative 2 and 1. Okay. Can you write down where x is equal to 0, for example, 2? 
Example two, where is f of x equal to zero? Right, number four, negative one and positive three. Okay, so these points is where f of x equals zero. I'm just writing it on there, hopefully it, hoping it helps. Those are all places where it's f of x is equal to zero. So I'm going to pause. Where is f of x equal to zero for a? Yeah, that's like negative 4.2 maybe and uh, positive 0.5 or 1 half, however you want to write it. If it's not um, exact, just estimate it. What about B? 1 and 3. And C? Negative 2. So you had a problem on your homework last night that only had one intercept and it was the vertex and when you get that and you have to graph it you need to just use a table to graph those that last problem in the homework but I'll go over those on Monday okay so that's the first idea where f of x equals zero those are the x-intercepts identifying the points where it crosses the x-axis the next thing is where is the function less than zero if you think about a coordinate plane f of x is your y values so is your y values less than 0 above the axis or below the axis? Below. below the axis is where the y values are less than 0. Agreed? Yeah. Less than my axis. So f of x is a function. It is less than 0 here. Okay, so these values where f of x is less than 0. On example 2, where it's less than 0 is this part, right? It's still below the axis where it's less than 0, correct? We want to write an inequality for the x values that have that part of the graph. Okay. Wouldn't you agree that these x values all correspond to the y values that are highlighted? All of the numbers between what? How do we write between negative 2 and 1? As an inequality. Negative 2 is less than x, less than 1. All of the, the, where the graph is less than the axis are these x values, right? This point, you go here and you go down. You go to one, negative 1 half and it's down. Negative 1.2 and down. All those have parts of the graph that are below the axis, so it's less than 0. So these x values cause f of x to be negative. How would I write that inequality for these? For example, 2. It would be the x values this way, right? The x values that are greater than 3 are, have y values that are less than 0, right? These x values, the graph isn't up over here, is it? This arrow means it keeps going, right? So these numbers that are greater than 3 are where the graph is less than 0. Where x is greater than 3, or what about these guys over here? How do I write these numbers over here? Less than and negative 1. The x values on the outskirts of the intercepts are causing negative y values there.
Now, where is the graph greater than zero? Example one, right? Above, right? Above the axis. So that's this part, right? And this part. So f of x is greater than 0 for, for graph th uh, 1 here. What are these x values? These x values are what? How would you say? All of the x values to the right of 1. It's not all real numbers. Greater than 1. x is greater than 1. And what about these x values over here? This also has a part of graph. Positive graph, yeah. X is less than negative 2. So you're going to have one of two things when you're asked where the function is greater than 0 or less than 0. You're either going to have the between statement. That's the loopy part of your parabola, right? The between statement is wherever the loopy part is. And the or statement is the rest of it. Now looking at example two, the loopy part is above the graph. That's a technical term. The loopy part here on the roller coaster, anyways, um, is the between statement. So this is between what? Right, so negative 1, less than x, less than 3. Remember that our between statements are always written with less than symbols. Because negative 1 is the lowest. It's less than all the shading, which is x. And all the shading is less than 3, which is the higher end point. And they're not equal to's in these inequalities because I am not asked where it's greater than or equal to 0, just where it's greater than. How about letter A? Where is f of x greater than 0? It's greater than 0 here, right? <coughs> How do I write that inequality? point five right in between here that's the and statement the between statement okay what about where f of x is less than zero Um, are we on A? Less than negative 4.2 or X is greater than 0.5. Okay, so B, where is F of X greater than 0? That's this part, right? Where x is greater than 3 or x is less than 1. Less than 0 is my loopy part here. Uh, I think it's positive still. Positive 1, less than x, less than 3. Okay. What about letter C? Where is f of x greater than 0? Nowhere. Nowhere, so no solution. Where is f of x less than 0? Everywhere except for where x equals negative 2. Because at x equals negative 2, it equals 0. It's not less than 0. So it's all real numbers except not equal to negative 2. So this is equal to zero at that inter um, at that vertex. 
Not yet. Backside. Let's go. Okay. Find the y-intercept. This is the easy one. Plug in x equals 0 to find the y-intercept. Oh, thank you. I don't even know where it came from. So all I have to do to find the y-intercept is plug in x equals 0. Okay? So if I plug in 0 for number 1, 2 times 0 minus 4 squared, that's 2 times negative 4 squared, 2 times positive 16 is 32. Okay, and what is my y-intercept? Is this equation number two in vertex form, standard form, or intercept form? This is in standard form, which means what is my y-intercept? It's five. You can plug in zero if you want, but you shouldn't have to on standard form, okay? With the intercept form, plug in zero, multiply them all together after you do the parentheses. Now, oops. The last type of problem that will be on the homework, and again, these are multiple choice, but what if you're given the equation and you're asked about the minimum and the maximum of increasing and decreasing? We need to make a sketch of the graph, okay? So we're going to sketch it, meaning we don't have to plug in lots of points. We just need to know the vertex and whether it's open up and up or down. So we're going to sketch each equation, but first I need you to tell me what form number one is in, vertex, intercept, or standard. Vertex. What about number two, vertex, intercept, or standard? Number three? Standard. And the last one? Intercept. Okay? So number one, if I'm drawing a sketch, okay, what's my vertex for number one? Five zero, and does it open up or down? down? Down. That's all I need to know in order to answer the questions about minimum, maximum, increasing, and decreasing. I don't need to plug in a lot of points. I need the vertex and whether it's open up or down. Okay, you have your axis of symmetry through there. Negative in front tells me it opens down. If there's no negative, it opens up. Number two, my intercept's at negative one and positive three. <laughs> I just broke my rules about drawing. It's a sketch, but this one. Negative one, positive three. Where's my axis of symmetry going to be? Positive one, right? Isn't that halfway? Yeah. Looks halfway to me. Right? If I want to know the maximum or minimum, I have to plug in that x equals negative 1. Right? 4 times negative 1 plus 1. It's not negative 1. It's a positive 1. 1 plus 1. Plus, oh, I even messed up my own handwriting. And 1 minus 3. 4 times 2 times negative 2, negative 16. We're just going to say that's negative 16. I don't need to measure it out to negative 16. Exact. So that's... Um, what, so what is the minimum of number 2? Negative 16. So you have to find the vertex in order to find the minimum and the maximum, and you need to know that axis of symmetry in order to get which side it's increasing and decreasing on. But you don't have to make a, a really accurate table. You just need to know that information, the vertex, whether it opens up or down. Okay, does, does graph 3 open up or down? It opens down. How do I find the vertex in standard form? Negative b over 2a, that's what your little table's for, right? That table we filled out. 
right? You have that out so you can find the information negative 6 over 2 times negative 1, which is positive 3. And then you can plug that in to find the y value. Negative 3 squared plus 6 times 3 minus 1. That's negative 9 plus 18 minus 1. 9 minus 1 is 8. I know because I'm out of time. So my vertex in this graph, thank you, 3, 8, opens down. That's all I need to know. And then I can answer the questions about decreasing and increasing. Okay, so this last one is a little tricky. It, it tricks us because we see 3x as one of the factors and we see x plus 7. We can set those both equal to 0 to solve. And when we solve 3x equals 0, we get x equals 0. Because I'm not adding or subtracting anything to that x. And then when we solve x plus 7 equals 0, we get x equals negative 7. So we have intercepts at 0 and negative 7. All right, that's one of the problems on the homework that I'm sure you had issues with, and we'll talk about that more. Then I want to find my vertex. That's going to be at halfway between 0 and negative 7 is negative 3.5. So that's my axis of symmetry. 3.5 is about there. And I would need to plug that in. 3 times negative 3.5 times negative 3.5 plus 7, which is 3 times negative 3.5 times 3.5 negative. I don't know. That's why I like fractions better. You can multiply it out this way. But I see 7 halves times 7 halves, which is 49 fourths times 3 which is negative 147 over 4. And that is 4 goes into 14. 47 goes in 3 times 12, 27. 4 goes into 27, 6 times that's 24, remainder 3. So, so 36 and 3 fourths. 36 and 3 fourths. I'm just going to sketch it. That means I'm not going to actually try to make the axis go up to 36 and 3 fourths. I just want to say that my maximum, right, it's negative. It, if it was positive, it would be my maximum. But it's negative. I told you I'm having trouble doing anything right today. 36 and 3 fourths. So it's negative, and that's my minimum. Negative 36 and 3 fourths. Okay. And then I can answer my other questions. It's decreasing to the left of negative 3.5, right? It's increasing to the right of negative 3.5. Okay. And we've been doing domain and range all week. Domain is all real numbers. Range is greater than my minimum, greater than or equal to negative 36 and 3 fourths.